Welcome to video number 39 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In this tutorial we look at first allowed block selection. Welcome back. We're continuing our look at the various block selection options that are available to us. The final block selection type that we need to look at is first allowed. Now similar to shortest path that we looked at in the last session, first allowed is a rarely used block selection method and it's actually quite difficult to think of scenarios where we might use it. It differs from other block selection methods in that it is based on permission rather than occupancy. For example, we saw that in order is based on occupancy. When using in order, iTrain considers the occupancy of the blocks. If the first block is unoccupied, it can select it. But if it is occupied, it will not select it and it will try the next block and so on. First allowed is based on permission and ignores the occupancy of the block. With first allowed, iTrain will always pick the first block in the list, even if it is occupied, and will only pick another block in the list if it doesn't have permission to enter that block. The reason it may not have permission to enter the block might be due to the permissions tab setting for the train type or the train or the locomotive or the wagon or some other restriction such as needing an electrified track. But the important thing is that occupancy of the blocks is not taken into consideration iTrain does not care if the block is occupied or not, which is what differentiates first allowed from other block selection methods. As I said earlier, it's quite difficult to think of scenarios where we might use first allowed. So here is the best example that I could think of that adequately demonstrates how first allowed works. Basically we have a dual track layout with all tracks traveling in the same direction. And you could imagine a section of track on your own layout that has a similar arrangement perhaps as this top section here. The outside track is not electrified and the inside track is electrified as indicated by these electrified symbols here that I have inserted on the tracks. The crossovers here and here are double slips. So trains approaching this one will have a choice of three different exits. And trains approaching this double slip will have two different exits. There are two stations, station one and station two. Station one 
has been set up to use first allowed block selection and station 2 has been set up to use at random block selection. Station 1 has four blocks called Platform A, Platform B, Platform C and Platform D, but only Platform B is electrified. These don't need to be platforms. You could imagine them as tracks within a yard. And station 2 has two blocks with platform E being the electrified platform or the electrified block. Initially, to keep things simpler, we are just going to consider the path into platform A and B and round to station 2. So for the moment we're going to ignore the paths to platform C and D. As we know diesel trains are capable of using electrified and non-electrified track and of course electric trains can only use electrified track. In our scenario let's say that for some reason we want to keep platform B exclusively for the use of electric trains only and so we want our diesel trains to be directed to the non-electrified platform, platform A, even if the electrified platform B is free. We can achieve this with first allowed because it is based on permission and not on occupancy. So in our scenario, even if platform B is not occupied, diesels will still not use platform B and will instead use platform A. And even if platform A is occupied, diesels will still not use platform B and will instead wait for platform A to become available. So again, the block selection is based on the permission to use a block or not to use a block. And iTrain disregards whether the block is occupied or not. Now we can use first allowed for train routes and for automatic routing without a route and we will demonstrate it using both methods. Let's first look at automatic routing without a route and for that we need to set the station properties which we can get to by right clicking within the station boundary and then selecting properties. We have selected shadow station as the type of station so it can be used with station blocks and siding blocks and we're using station blocks in all of our block locations here so all four of the blocks are displayed in the blocks tab. The block selection method is set to first allowed and all the ticks in the block list here are in their default positions. The train types tab is set to receive all train types and we have set the 
percentage chance of a weight to 100% and weight is ticked, which ensures that the block selection method will be active. Remember, if a weight is not selected for the station or for the blocks with these ticks here, then the chosen selection method will not run. And the last thing we need to do now is to ensure that the block selection order is correct for our scenario. And again, just to repeat, first allowed means it will always pick the first block in the list, even if it is occupied, and will only pick another block if the train is not allowed or does not have the permission to enter that block. In our scenario, we want all non-electric trains to always use platform A in station 1. So to achieve that, we need to set A as the first block in the list. And it is already first in the list. And of course, if we needed to move it, we could move it up and down to place it at the first slot. So ignoring the occupancy of block A, as long as there is nothing else preventing a train entering A, I train will always use A because it is the first block in the list. But when an electric train enters the station, it cannot use platform A because the track is not electrified. Therefore, it looks at the next block in the list, which is platform B. B is electrified and ignoring the occupancy of B, if there is nothing else preventing the train from entering the block, it will use B. Now in station two, just as a comparison and to give some variation in the paths that the train will take around the layout, we've set this to at random. So that's everything set for automatic routing without a route. Let's see how it performs. In this throttle, we have the electric shuttle train. And in the other throttle, I'm going to place the diesel train called D6510. We want to run automatic routing without a route, so we make sure that there is no route selected down here. And we'll place our train onto platform F. When we press the start button, we see that a path is reserved round to platform A, which is what we want. And if I stop and start, we'll just check that it does consistently choose platform A and not one of the other platforms. And if we alt click on that platform to simulate it being occupied, we will see that it correctly still tries to choose platform A, as we can see down here, even though it is occupied. And that is what we're looking for it to do. And as soon as we 
unoccupy it by alt clicking on it again we see that it then goes into the station and if we allow this to continue through it will enter the station stop at the platform complete its wait cycle and then it starts to root out of the station and if we let this continue round we can see that it is now routing round to here and in this station we have select this to at random so if I stop and start now we should see that it will choose different paths each time so now we can see that iTrain is randomly selecting one of the paths into station 2. We'll just let that continue in and then stop the train there. Let's put the electric train onto the layout. We'll place it in platform E. We've got no route selected here, so we are running in automatic routing without a route. And when we press the start button and stop it, we see that it is consistently only selecting platform B because that is the only electrified track route that it can take. And again, even when we alt click to simulate it being occupied, it will have to wait until that block is available and then it enters. And of course, if we allow it to continue round, it can only take the electrified route and so it will come back into station 2 onto platform E. And the same thing will happen with the train route. I've already created a train route this one that is called first allowed and it starts off in station two and then goes around to station one where all the blocks are listed and we have first allowed selected as the block selection method and then it then comes around to station two again where we're using at random and then completes the loop and continues around the loop again until we ask it to stop. So this time we need to ensure that we have selected the train route so that when we press the start button we will be running a train route and not automatic routing without a route and we should see the same operation so press start and we see that it is consistently selecting platform A and if we alt click we should see that it continues to try and select platform A uh, until we release it and then it is allowed to enter into that particular block and if we allow it to then continue round it will come round back into the station. And we can stop the route there. And we could do the same thing with the electric train and select first allowed there and we'll see that it will continue to use the electrified track of course. 
Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, Bob, I can achieve the same thing by using in order in this station instead of first allowed and by simply setting the permissions tab for the diesel train so that it cannot enter block B, I will achieve the same thing. And you would be correct. For a two-path selection, that would operate in the same way as we have just shown with first allowed. Let's quickly do that. We could do it in a train route or in automatic routing without a route. It's a little quicker to do it in the automatic routing. So we will disable the routes down here. And for automatic routing without a route, we make the settings in the station properties. So we'll right click on that. We'll come into here and all we need to do is to make that in order now and then in the trains tab or the trains editor for DB6510 we will set the permissions tab here to have no access to block B. So we click append and we look for platform B here and click apply and then close that down. So now when we run the automatic route we should see a similar operation. Let's have a look. So yes, remember we're choosing this in order now and it is consistently choosing platform A. It won't choose platform B because we set the permissions tab to not allow access to it. So it appears to be working in the same way as first allowed. But the subtle difference is when we have more than the two paths available. So we have also got these other routes that iTrain could take. And let's see what happens when this block is actually occupied. So we we'll all click on it. And now when we press the start button, we see that iTrain goes ahead and selects this block down here because if we look at our list we're using in order it tried to use platform A it is occupied it then tries to use platform B but it cannot use it because we set the permissions tab for this train DB 6510 so that it is not allowed access to B and so for in order selection it then looks at the next block and it sees that block f block C is free and therefore it is allowed to select it. But if we take this route back let's stop the route and if we take it back to at random for the order selection, sorry, take it back to first allowed and reactivate that block. And just for completeness, we will remove the block that we had on here. And so now when we run the operation with first allowed selected, we see that it is correctly 
selecting that block, but this time when we make the block um, occupied, we will see that iTrain is still only selecting block A and doesn't try to attempt to use these other blocks because with first allowed it disregards the occupancy of a block. So is that useful or not? It all depends on how you want iTrain to react to a block being occupied. If you want it to look for another free block, which is the most common mode of operation, then you would use in order or at random block selection. But if for some reason you wanted certain trains or train types to always use platform A, for example, regardless of the occupancy, then first allowed might provide a solution for you. But it is quite a rare situation and normally you would use one of the other block selection methods. So that is first allowed block selection. And of course we could continue a little further. For example, we could make it so that this particular path was only used by cargo trains and using first allowed selection. So, for example, if I remove this diesel here and place our cargo train, this particular train, DB car, is set up as a cargo type train. If I place this onto the layout here, go up to the trains and we'll see that DB car is a cargo train and we set the permissions so that it has no access to platform A or to platform B. Go down here, platform B, press apply and we make platform A active again by all clicking on it. When we run this particular automatic route we see that it is always choosing platform C even if it is occupied. So a slight advantage of first allowed compared to in order or at random is that you don't need to worry about setting the permissions tab for any other paths following this one because with first allowed it will always try to use this particular block but with in order or, or at random, if this block is occupied, it will attempt to use these other paths unless you set the permissions tab for each of those to stop the cargo trains going into those blocks. So maybe that's an advantage to you and a reason to use first allowed. But as I said earlier, it's a very rare instance where you may want to use it and normally we would advise using in order or at random. So that's it. We've now looked at all of the various different block selection methods in this list here. Now as we went through the tutorials for each of those block selection methods it may appear that automatic routing without a route 
and train routes are operating in exactly the same way. And it would be incorrect to assume that. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to explain why. So hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.